Um, all right, guys, so in today's lesson, we're going to talk about classifying things. Uh, specifically, the things we'll be classifying is biodiversity, which is pretty much living things. Um, in your books, this is Nelson Biology, uh, Chapter 5. It's sort of spread around Chapter 5. Um, and a classification leads to things such as this. So you've got um, two bears here playing, um, and out from the corner, the mother bear, I guess, calls... Ursus Atticus Horribilis, horribilis, you get down here this instant. And the bear says, uh-oh, when my mum calls me by a full Latin species name, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> and we get these names from classifications. All right, um, pause the video here and have a go at um, these three quick questions. We're going to go through them together in class. All right, so in the study design, we're, we're into the second last area of unit one bio and it's all about organizing biodiversity um, and we want to do this classifying of biodiversity both how it used to happen in the past and we're going to look at issues in that and how we more do it to um, now currently and how we classify it into what we call taxonomic groups um, based on morphological and molecular characteristics um, these two things are quite important morphological is when we're talking about physical characteristics so things that we can see things we can dissect and have a look at all right molecular characteristics in this case is actually talking about dna and protein features all right why do we look at these because this is our genetics right we can get a lot of past information from this okay and then also this naming using what we call binomial nomenclature so uh, hopefully you notice that there's a massive range of living things in the planet. If you haven't noticed, go take a step outside and have a look around. You're going to see heaps of different birds, different plants. Um, you might even, if you're lucky, you might see a small mammal here and there. Um, if you look really close to the ground, you'll see some insects. Um, if you got your microscope out, you'd see some bacteria. All right, And that's just outside here at school. Um, if you go across the world to Africa, you've got all these different kinds of animals. Animals. If you go to North America, all these different kind of animals, and that's just on land. If you go underwater, you actually have 10 times the amount of animals than we have on land, all right? So there's a huge range of these living things on the planet. Um, so we take these living things and we actually group them, um, and we use... We, we have to group them because it's it becomes quite easier to study them if we group them. And, and the group this grouping work is done by taxonomists in the field that's called taxonomy okay um and it's really important that the organization of these groupings actually change all the time and no one can agree if you do something here in australia for example they disagree in the unit us so none of these are concrete all right we do study the australian standards of all of these but know that um given reasoning things do change okay so let's talk about why do we actually classify these things. Um, it's really important to compare organisms because it actually gives us more understanding in terms of their relationships, their relations, and so it gives us understanding about our own relations. Um, I want to show you an example of comparisons in, in real life. Um, imagine if your wardrobe looked like this, okay? Uh, would you be able to find anything in here? Hopefully you can realize that no, I wouldn't find the specific pair of pants that I would want. Having a wardrobe like this, on the other hand, means that we know exactly where everything is and we can get the information about every single little thing in our wardrobe very easily. And classification of living things is much the same. Um, so we actually put together all these classifications into what we call reference collections and nowadays we even use Fee, oh, well, we use field guides and we even have field guides that are online for the example the museum victoria field guide uh, a, a app that i highly recommend you um download um and we just simply use these things to actually uh, put together all this data that we get from uh these classifications and so we can better organize and classify okay um there's a few issues in terms of classifying before we get on to classifying. Um, and issues actually arise when morphologically, so the physical appearance of something is very similar, but in t they're not similar in terms of the molecular genetic level. And a great example of this is sharks and dolphins. Um, as you can see, sharks and dolphins morphologically on the physical level look very, very similar. But 
they are not at all related at the genetic level, okay? Dolphins are actually much more closely related to hippopotamuses, all right? Um, hippopotamus is actually the closest living relative of whales and dolphins that lives on land, okay? Um, so it's really important to note that the molecular genetic level always takes precedence, okay? Um, just because something looks the same as something else doesn't mean that it's actually classified together. All right, let's go through the classification systems really quick. Um, a little bit of history. The first biologist called Linnaeus um, actually classified the living world into two different kingdoms, and he called them the vegetable or the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom, okay? Um, this was great for Linnaeus and the world of biology at the, at the time because it meant that we're starting to look at how things are closer related to each other. Were there issues? Yes, very, very big issues. Um, one interesting issue that you might not realise are these group that um, Linnaeus chucked into the vegetable group, which are the fungi. Uh, fungi look like trees and they act like plants in many ways, but nowadays we actually know that fungi should actually have been put into this animal group, which is a bit funny if you think of it, um, but they're actually closer related to animals than they are to plants. All right, um, the system then, especially with the birth of the microscope, we um, introduced the protists, which were anything that we couldn't really see with the bare naked eye, okay? Later, this was actually redefined into five kingdoms, all right? So we had still this kingdom of the protists, which were the things that we couldn't see with uh, the naked eye, but then we actually took away the things from the protists called the Monerans, all right? And the Monerans were the things we couldn't see with the naked eye, but were really too simple to be classified with the protists, all right? Um, also, uh, plants and animals, that classification held quite well, and but we added that kingdom of the fungi as well. Um, now today we actually have six kingdoms, okay? Um, we sort of break down the two, the six kingdoms into the eukaryotes, all right, which are the complex living things, and then the prokaryote, which are the more basic, simpler living things, okay? Um, and within those eukaryotes and prokaryotes, we have the bacteria and archaea down the very bottom, all right? We have in the eukaryotes, the plants, the plantae, this protist group, which is the simple, uh, the, the complex but microscopic things. Uh, and we've got the fungi and the animals, animalia. Um, later on in the 90s, we actually broke down this classification system even further um, into dom what we call domains, okay? And this was like sort of like a level of classification above the kingdoms, okay? Um, and how domains works uh, is that we really were able to clump together these three domains, the bacteria domain, the archaea domain, and the eukaryota domain, okay? So we pretty much had really simple stuff, really complex stuff, and then stuff that fell into the middle, okay? But as you can see, these classification systems constantly change, lots and lots and lots of cool stuff happening to them. Um, we can actually follow classification systems using this thing, which is called a phi, low genetic tree, okay? And actually find different interesting things. For example, all the living animals in the world, they actually fall into just this little branch of this phylogenetic tree, all right? On the other hand, if you think of all of those microscopic bacteria that are on your hand right now, they all fall inside of this huge part of the phylogenetic tree, all right? So that's quite interesting to look at. So when we actually go and break down this classification system, we actually now create what we have, this domain to species classification, okay? Um, so pretty much we have bigger umbrella terms at the top here, starting at domain, and we get smaller and smaller and smaller as we go to species. Okay, um, so pretty much we go domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. All right, if you go on Wikipedia, for example, and you Googled lions, all right, it would actually give you all of these. And it also can give you some subfamilies, suborders, okay, things that actually go in between. But these are the main um, eight 
um, orders, uh, um, sorry, taxonomies of the classification system. Okay, uh, you can click this little link here in the corner and it actually will take you to a little uh, mnemonic that you can create to remember this classification system. All right, and then from this classification system, we get what's called binomial nomenclature, all right? Bi meaning two, nomial coming from um, two names, so naming things using two names. And how we actually use it is it's a system that is used worldwide by scientists, and it follows the format of generic name followed by the specific or the species name, okay? A great example of this is homo sapiens which are us humans okay um, and the rule is also always to write that genus name first so homo here in this case is the genus name and it's always with a capital letter and sapiens the species name is always written in lowercase okay uh, another example of this here is felis catus <laughs> which is the domestic cat, all right? Um, lots and lots of different examples that you'd be able to find. 